Okay, so... I wasn't planning to Twitch stream tonight. I'm gonna admit that. Because, uh, well, I was planning to. I wanted to yesterday and couldn't. Um, but then I planned to tonight as a, oh, hey, I didn't yesterday, let's go ahead and do it now. Um, but my kids came to me and went, Dad, tomorrow is Decades Day at school, and we want to dress as hippies because we have long hair already, and we don't know how to dress as hippies. So, first things first, I found them the biggest uh, shirts I could find that would still fit them. So they're wearing a pair of my shirts for this. They're going to be, you know, uh, pretty, pretty big shirts. Um, and then I managed to find a uh, headband I had made for myself out of some roving that a uh, friend had given me. So there's that. One of them's got that. I found two... Um, two woven bracelets that another friend had given me. Thank you so much, Ten Nine, if you're watching tonight. Um, and so they've got those. So there's parts of the costume. Jeans are easy. Uh, we don't have bell bottoms, but you know. But they want necklaces too, because they looked up some pictures of hippies and saw that yes, you know, a lot of the boy hippies wore necklaces. Um, and we don't have those. So, since I needed to be doing my crafting stream anyway, um, I decided I was going to make some air dry beads, or some beads out of air dry clay. I'm going to put them in the oven to dry them. Uh, and we're going to use those, and then I'll paint those. But I figured, you know what? I can go ahead, and while I'm at it, I can also um, do stuff for my crafting stream, the Spooktober theme. I mean, technically, we're doing Halloween theme anyway, because it's a dress up. Uh, but we're also going to do something a little spookier than the hippie-styled air-dried beads. Um, hopefully I can get the beads dried fast enough that I can paint them into peace signs, flowers, things like that, and get them built into... I've got some hemp cord that I'm going to turn into uh, necklaces, so hopefully. If not, well, I'll figure something out. Uh, for right now, swapping over to the camera, and we're going to get started. So... You guys aren't going to be able to see me as well uh, today on this camera uh, because of how I'm sitting to work on this, but let's get started, okay? Uh, this is air dry clay, just the standard. Uh, I don't think it's the Crayola brand, which I have worked with before. I don't tend to like oven drying the Crayola brand, otherwise I would have gotten that out. The Crayola brand tends to crack if you oven dry it. Um, we're not going to get out a ton of this to start. I'm going to wrap up what we're not working with just off the front because I'd like to keep it as moist as possible and I store mine, as you can see, wrapped in plastic wrap and then tuck the plastic wrap into Tupperware just to keep it as moist as possible. Yes, I know people don't like that word. Oh no, moist. Um, but to keep it as damp as possible, moist as possible, whatever word you want to use, so that it doesn't dry out faster. Okay, so I'm going to try, first and foremost, to do two roughly equal-sized... Um, these are going to get turned into small peace signs. Okay, those are about the same size. Okay, so... First things first, we're going to smash them. And I happen to have a little jar, um, just the right size for smushing things to make a little circle. We don't want them to be very thick because we want them to dry as fast as possible in the oven. Uh, to air dry, to, to dry air dry clay in the oven, uh, so because normally it would take between 24 and 48 hours, um, unless it was like super thick to just dry it on the counter or something, and that's if the uh, 
air temperature cooperates because or the humidity levels in your area cooperate because if you've got a particularly humid environment um, which it's been raining a lot that's why it took so long for parts of the bone fairy to dry even though I switched to using Elmer's glue is because it's been so humid here um, it's been raining most of the past week so the good thing is because these are meant to be for hippies who used a lot of hand crafted designs um, it's going to be pretty easy to do this even if they're not perfect it doesn't have to be it just has to work so first things first I'm going to just I mean I'm yes just, I, oh with that um, I know what a peace sign looks like. I really do, I promise. But I want to look at pictures while I'm working on it just to be certain that I'm doing it right because I want to make certain that I am making a peace sign and not the uh, symbol for the Volvo company, you know. So there we go. Okay. Uh, I can, for anyone who wants to chat with me while I'm working on this. Uh, I can see your chat because I am using a uh, the 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 Twitch wait a second why am I using this? I have yes I have woodworking tools that are perfectly functional for shaping clay. Duh, Mason. Okay. So. I technically have a, a round one, too, that I could also use, but right now we're just gonna I don't want to do this so it's too thin is the big thing because I want to make certain it's going to stand up to a day in the life of a teenage boy uh, but I definitely want to get rid of as much of the excess material This couch eats people if you don't sit on it just right, and uh, me moving meant it was just the wrong way. Uh, this one has a curve to it, so that's going to be great for getting out this little piece here. Okay. And of course I end up with cat hair in it. Why would I ever think that anything in my house should not be contaminated by the lady who does not care. She is sitting off to the side and napping, as is her due, as the ruler of our house. Okay. So that's... All the way through. There we go. Okay. Now, that one all the way through. That one all the way through. Let go. Alright. And. Yeah! I am a professional. Not. Okay. So. Over. Again, we want to make certain it goes all the way through on this. Okay. My kids better appreciate this. <laughs> of course they will. I've got really good kids. I'll, I'll be one of the first to say that. They're great kids. 
just would have been nice if they reminded me about this before, you know, or at least told me what they were going to be. Like, I've been getting the notifications from the school going, hey, by the way, it's school spirit week, here's what all of the days are. But they never told me what they wanted to dress up as, and I mean, I don't like to make assumptions about what they want to dress as, so would have been nice to have been warned just a touch, that's all. So this is, it's not quite perfect, but that's not too shabby, honestly. Let's see, make this a little, heck off that little bit, make it a little more. If, by the way, anyone actually knows what they're doing, as opposed to me, who's just kind of messing around with this, feel free to let me know, hey, you're screwing it up, here's what you should be doing instead. So, okay. Again, not perfect, but I think that's a serviceable peace sign. And there's going to be some uh, shrinkage with it being uh, air dried in the oven. Uh, things always shrink a little bit when you dry clays, but if you dry them faster, they shrink a bit more. Um, so there will be that to worry about. But for the moment, I think that I've got something decent. So my goal <clears throat> is going to be to make a couple of the peace signs, well, two peace signs. Let's face it, I'm not doing this more than I have to. Um, so two peace signs, and then I'll switch and do something spooktoberish for the last bit, um, which I think... What I'm going to do for the spooky bit is a, uh, a gravestone because that'll be nice and easy and if I make two small holes in the base then I can actually use it for a thing that I have been I won't quite say I was threatening to make it, but I promised to make for a friend of mine. I promised to make her a gravestone headband. And I've got everything I need, but I don't have the gravestone, so. No, that didn't come out very good now, did it? Okay, well, it'll work. If anyone gripes about the, uh, quality of the peace signs, it'll be like the teachers who actually lived through the era of peace and love, if any of them did. I think at least one of them is in his 60s, so, um, wow, it was really that long ago. Yeah, 40, 60 years ago, yeah. So, yeah, he probably was a teenager. No, no, he would have been like a kid, I think, maybe. I don't know. Time is not necessarily linear for me, so... What's that? Time is a linear thing? No, it is a wibbly-wobbly, tiny-wimey bounces around and confuses the heck out of me thing. Come on, you. Tease that out. Neaten that up just a touch. Okay. Let's try to make that a little bit. Okay, thank you. That was, that was nice and deep, but uh, let's not cut 
all the way through things. Blah, blah, blah. There we go. Okay. So neither one's perfect, but that's okay. Perfect is not the goal. Perfect is frankly impossible. Okay, so now we have these little bits of excess and what I'm going to do with them is I'm going to make two beads out of each of them that will wrap around this thing and then can go on either side of the peace sign on the hemp shell or uh, hemp cord necklace. So the beads, of course, I will hopefully have enough uh, time to dry them and paint them. But if I don't, oh well. Kids should have warned me about this beforehand. Okay. So good thing about this is again, it's meant to emulate things that were made by hippies, which means it was pretty much all handcrafted, and therefore, perfection is not the goal at all. Perfection would, in fact, be almost uh, the antithesis, an antith whatever, the opposite of my goal, because I want something that looks as I said, handcrafted by a bunch of people who were stoned out of their gourds. <laughs> um, okay. Let's see. And then I've still, later, <clears throat> After I finish the crafting stream, I'm going to have to do the uh, crocheted headband for the other one that doesn't have the one that I've already made. They were asking me if I had any uh, hippie shades as they described them, and I finally pointed out, no, those are John Lennon shades, what you're describing. Um, and then they, of course, were like, who's John Lennon? And I felt my uh, father-in-law dying inside at that question, even though he didn't hear it. <laughs> um, he'd be even more horrified if uh, they were to ask me who Cat Stevens is, but I think I've introduced them to his music at least. And then they tried to say that the hip that the Beatles were hippies themselves, and I said not until after the boy band craze that started their fame ended. Um, many of them went on to become hippies, but they were very much not hippies to start. Okay, so that's four beads and two peace signs. We're going to let those dry a bit, and we are going to get started on our gravestone. Um, so the gravestone itself should be fairly simple. I mean, it's gravestone. Um, but I think I'm going to go just a touch further with it and not only make the gravestone, but also make a bit of a grave to go with it. So this will be for the grave. The gravestone does not need to be quite as big. I don't think I'm going to put any funny etched in uh, words on it. I'll have a much better chance of being able to paint something onto it after it's dried um, and trust that it'll hold still. If I tried to etch it, and then tried to heat it in the oven to dry it, I would likely end up with everything shrinking to the point of complete uh, unreadability. So, okay. Let's go ahead and do the gravestone first. So, I want to get this to roughly the right 
size and shape. But I also don't want it to be so thick that it's going to take too long to dry. All right. So we're going to use why well, yes I baked as a kid and as a teenager and as an adult up until well uh, fairly recently when I started a diet that means I can't have sweets like I used to. Very sad. Okay, so we want this to be stable enough it stands up on its own. So we're going to give it a bit of a foot for the base and then make it a little bit. Squish down, squish down. That ended up with it a bit lopsided, so we're going to flatten this out again. Okay. It's not bad at all. Now, with it having a nice base, let's go ahead and make something for that base to go up against. And all of this, once I'm done, and it has been heated and dried and all the good stuff, I can use my paints. Um, I do think it's going to take a bit longer than the stream itself will allow for the uh, heating and drying to... Oh, what do you know? That's... I never noticed this was crooked until now. Let's use the other one that's not crooked. Yeah, that one's nice and straight. Okay. Now, we're not going to make this super big. I want to thin it down some, sure, and make it a bit longer. Because uh, the grave generally is longer than the uh, stone itself. But then I'm also going to thicken up the center to make kind of a bump. So Now, I don't work with clay a lot. I'm going to admit that freely. Um, I used to when I was younger, but opportunity and time, um, the clay I used to work with when I was younger was not air dry clay. It was very much the, okay, everybody, you're going to make your thing, and then you're going to give it to the art teacher who will take it home because I had the amazing uh, luck of having an actual artist who had a professional kiln for an art teacher um, when I was in high school. And I know most kids don't have that luck. Um, I know some of the nicer schools in our area might have their own uh, kilns that they have access to, but I know the fact that I got that when I went to a relatively small school. It was not a big major school. It was a very small town. I think that the town had like 2,000 people uh, total in it, and so the fact that I had that excellent, excellent luck of having not only an amazing art teacher who introduced us to so much more than like most art teachers in small town America could manage, um, but also had his own kiln. So we got to work with actual clay, not just, you know, not just um, art that was like paper and pencil, like what my brother dealt with. He got to paint, he got to uh, do things like that, but he never got to mess with clay because, I mean, the school we went to when he was in art class just didn't have access. So um, I still have some of the things that I made. I made a lot of 
very, very small things like miniature type things, um, particularly uh, coil pots that were like small enough you could put maybe a single marble in. Um, I made a lot of things that were like small daggers and no, I'm not going to add those until after it's done. Um, uh, but I made a lot of small daggers and things like that. Okay, so now we have a tombstone. We have a grave. We have our two peace signs. We have four beads, or what will be beads. Um, let's see. I can probably paint flowers onto the beads, so I don't need to worry about that. Is there anything else I want to build before... So remember the Bone Fairy in a jar? Well, Bone Fairy is done. Um, but I have some leftover bits. And I'm starting to wonder if maybe I should make spots for the bits to be reaching out of their graves. But I think if I do that, I'm going to want to cut down one of these arms so it's just a hand, which this will be fun. You guys get to see how I actually cut down the bits to make my bone fairy. Yeah. Toenail clippers. Surprisingly versatile. Okay. So, that way, that can be just a hand reaching out, and then this one will be the hand and forearm. Yeah, you wouldn't think it, would you? There we go. Now I've got some bones left over. And then what I'm going to do... One, I'm going to peel off this fake aging that I'm going to make. Let's see. So, for a grave. I'm not going to use the legs. Um, cool as they would be, that would be a bit much with what we're going for, so... Okay. So, head is here. Head would be roughly that. Shoulders. The arm clawing its way out of the grave would be about there. And I'm making that little indentation so that I have a spot to stick that down once I've got this painted. Okay, in the hand, could be right there. So what I'll do is I will bake these, and then once it's done, I can put the hand and arm coming out of the grave, clawing their way up, glue those down, paint the grave so it looks like dirt and stones, things like that. Um, probably attach some fake grass, uh, similar to what I did for the Bone Fairy, uh, which by the way, I've decided what I'm going to do is at the end of September, or uh, October, my very last stream for the month. I will show off all of the things that I have completed that didn't get shown as I was finishing them on stream. So, okay. There's that. I think I'm gonna... I'm trying to figure out how I wanna do this. I know that I want 
Do I want to join them together and then bake them, or do I want to leave them separate and bake them after? That's my question right now. Um, okay. I know that the big thing right now is I need to get things in the oven if I expect them to have any time to dry. So, go ahead and let's see. Stream's only been 30 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and go to Be Right Back. I'm going to mute the stream. When I come back, we'll do the other thing that I had been planning to do before I realized hey, I should probably be playing with the air dry clay because I found a drawing list for uh, for the month of October because of course everyone does these drawing challenges, things like that. Um, and the drawing list I found was really cute and so I'm going to draw on stream for just a bit, show off the things that um, I can draw, which will be interesting because I am not a good artist at all, but hey, it is what it is. So, let's see. There's that challenge. Okay. And also, I am way behind on the stream. I haven't done on the uh, challenges, I have not done any of them yet. Oh, hey, it looks like. This one's actually only 13 prompts long, which that will make it a lot easier. But yeah, you guys are going to get to see me draw. I'm going to get these in the oven. I will check on them periodically, and maybe they'll be done before I'm done with the stream. So I'll be back in a few. Okay, so I am back, and I have my prompt list up. So this is 13 prompts for the uh, month of Halloween instead of the uh, one per day that I've seen before. These are roughly two to three days per prompt. So to get caught up to the 18th where we are now, well, technically, I could just go up to the 17th. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. So, we're going to see how many of these drawings we can get through in um, probably another 30 ish minutes. First one is a crab vampire. Um, 
Now you guys are going to see me drawing. I don't know how well it's going to pick up what I'm drawing because I'm using pencil. I always do when I draw. I think technically you are supposed to uh, draw in pen for this, for the October drawing things, um, because it's supposed to, you know, focus on getting it done without going back and fixing mistakes, but we're going to see. So. Um, this particular challenge is the draw with zoo gration challenge. Um, from Zugu, I think, and October 1st through 3rd, our challenge is a crab vampire. So, well, yeah, you guys can see it. It's just not super. Okay. Um, so I specifically wanted to draw a crab that I saw recently called the shame-faced crab uh, because they have very large claws relative to the size of their body, and they tend to bring them up over their face like this. So you can just see the eyes peeking out over the, the claws. And to me, I thought, hey, that's like a uh, vampire hiding its face behind a cape. So, okay, we're going to start with the crab body, which is fairly simple. Crabs are, uh, I'm pretty sure why there's a reason why, uh, why nature keeps going back to crab. Uh, car carcinization, I think is what it's called. Give me just a moment here. I'm going to bring up a picture of a shame-faced crab. Images. Yeah, they're adorable. They really are. You'll see in a few when I uh, draw it. Okay, so they have, for a crab, unusually high up edges to their shell. It comes like this, which kind of works for with, with what we're doing. because that's almost like the uh, widow's peak that you see on an actual, like, old-school vampire. Um, so they have... And then their body does this, which is really strange for a crab. So, like, this is just the top shell that I'm drawing right now. I'm not even drawing their... Uh, they're little claws. It's just this not really even gradual drop over to here and then it just like down it goes. And so you end up with this weird shape. Um, for a crab, it, it's very strange. Let's face it, that's not how a crab normally is built. So, but then they've got their claws, which come around. And notice, you can't see any legs that I'm drawing. And it's just, it's the way they're built. They don't have, and here's another fun one about them. Their claws, they're not sharp, like what we're used to. They kind of have these loose bumpies and what makes it really neat is 
those loose bumps kind of interlock almost so you end up with a crab that can pretty well seal itself into its own body okay. now here is where we'll see tiny little bits of crab legs and then this is mostly dark space you don't really see much of the crabs face so up here we have these crabs um they've got the name the shame-faced crab because they look like they're always hiding their face um but their face is almost like expressive for a crab like So here's the top of that. And here's the other. And we're going to have just a little gap in here because I want to make certain that we can see this crab's mouth because there's the and we're going to give our crab little fangs which you know crabs don't normally have so him just a touch more vampire-y, so we're going to add some spots here and here and over here and here, and we're going to loop some fabric so that our crab here he's holding on one arm and there we go we have well, a crab vampire it's not much but hey it's me drawing which is kind of a miracle in and of itself I do not draw normally okay so let's go to day two or technically days four and five since this was days one two and three the bad thing about this particular uh, notebook that I've struggled with since getting it is that the pages like to stick together and then when you try to remove it you end up tearing bits of them off okay so
hashtag draw. with zoo gration Opt fourth and fifth and our challenge for this one is anglerfish robot so, now I don't actually need to look up how to draw an anglerfish. I know how they look. I don't even need to look up references for the, uh, the shape of the body, unlike the, the shame-faced crab. So, we're going to go ahead. Now, the funny thing is I could draw a male anglerfish, and it would look nothing like what anybody expects. And it would also be about this big, comparative to the rest of the thing. Um, but we're not going to do that because anglerfish are, you know, we, we want to see the females, which are big, uh, comparative at least. I mean, some of them are about that big in real life, you know, um, but compared to the male who's literally like that big, you know, it's a comparative thing. Um, we're going to draw ours from this angle because I want to have as much space here because I want to draw it head-on. We're not going to draw the back of it. We're going to draw that big round with our long, hooked, craggy teeth. And anglerfish obviously don't have dentists, so uh, it's okay if their teeth look pretty nasty and jagged because, well, It's not like anybody's ever dealt with their cavities for them. So, the fun part of this is going to be figuring out how to turn it into a robot. If you notice, I tend to go for the animal first. And after I've drawn the animal, then I will add in the challenge elements. This one I have always been kind of spooked out by anglerfish just because they are what they are. And finding out that the male anglerfish is basically just a uh, he attaches himself to the female and then shrinks down into nothing more than a living pair of gonads. Um, that, that makes them even more terrifying. The idea of that incredible loss of individuality and self, you know. I mean, how much self does a fish have? Uh, I'm sure there are some, uh, especially pet fish, where you'll find more individuality, but for a wild fish out in the ocean, that's kind of not as big a thing as you might. You know, here's where we're going to make the robot parts. We want our little 
lure here's where we're gonna like I said here's where we're gonna turn it into a robot it's gonna have an actual light bulb on its lure I don't know that you guys can hear me when I get back quiet while uh, drawing these but edge of where it attaches. Now, to add more robot elements, we're going to go around those eyes, and we're going to add rivets, turning those from eyes into lights or portholes. Also they have very, very simple and pitiful ray fins. So around the outside of that eye and add our rivets. I used to do a drawing challenge with my kids uh, that was very similar to the ideas here which is you take an animal and a plant and something natural like minerals or similar things and let's see let's go ahead few more elements here. Okay. There we go. I don't take a lot of time with my drawings. Um, I think when I was doing the challenge with the twins, I would actually set a time limit that was basically, okay, we are all going to do as much as we can in X amount of time. I think I would set it for 30 minutes because one of my sons is very much a perfectionist and would absolutely spend his entire uh, challenge if he didn't have a time limit on a very, very small part of the image. And I wanted to ensure that he couldn't do that. It's finally preheated to 200. Um, okay, so there we go. All right, let's go on to the next one, which is oh, this will be fun. Um, let me go ahead and draw with zoo. Migration. October sixth and seventh, and this time we're going to draw a wombat pumpkin. Um, something you might notice is uh, these aren't necessarily animals that you're used to seeing drawn. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pause for just a moment. I'm going to go check on the air dry clay and see if it's ready yet, okay? So, be right back. And I'm back. Okay, so um, 
Wombats honestly are already kind of pumpkin shaped. I mean, they're round ish. I mean, they're kind of square ish, but so are some pumpkins. Uh, pumpkins are the easy part. I mean, it's circle ish. It doesn't even have to be perfect circle. And you just kind of add some lines. In this case, let's see. I am, by the way, making it a point to not look at the uh, drawings done by the person that I got this prompt from, because I want to make certain that I am not just copying what they've done. Um, if I want to look for references, I go ahead and I look up the references uh, in just an image search. Um, let's go ahead. You know what? We're going to play with this idea. Instead of actually drawing the animal, what we're going to do is a wombat jack-o'-lantern. So let's get started with our pumpkin first and foremost. And like I said, pumpkins do not need to be in any way, shape, or form perfect. They are lumpy and bumpy and you just kind of, they're, they're like people, you know, some of them have lumps and bumps and so there's our pumpkin And of course, it's got now. Obviously, to make a jack o' lantern, you have to have cut a hole at some point in the top of your pumpkin. So, what we're gonna do is some of this. We're going to erase. Like I said, I don't see any problem with erasing. Um, I'm not a professional artist, and therefore I'm... maybe I'm immune to the rules, as it were, I don't know. Um, okay. So now, wombat face for a jack-o'-lantern. We want a big nose, and we're going to, again, erase some of the lines where they intersect with our wombat. Now, going to add lines to symbolize our muzzle. Those lead up to round eyes. Womba Lantern <laughs> to have ears and again erasing where the lines intersect and now we're also going to have Again, erase right there so that our Womba Lantern can have a mouth. 
Okay. You know what, I don't like the muzzle lines, so we're just gonna remove those and redo them. not perfect. But we're going to go ahead and fill in the spaces that are keep running out of pencil lead. This is just a basic mechanical pencil that I uh, keep with this particular drawing journal. Uh, this journal pretty much only gets used for October challenges, so it's handy to keep a pencil with it. it means I don't have to go fighting to find one. Um, and by coloring in the spots that are black, it'll show what was cut out and what was left hold. My kids always cut a bit too much when they uh, cut off the top, so I inevitably end up having to, like, use toothpicks to hold the lid back on after they've done their deed with it. I might talk to them and see if they want to be involved with a uh, stream and we cut jack-o'-lanterns next time, but that's going to be up to them. I make it a point that they don't get on video unless they want to be. Um, I didn't like it when I was a kid, and my parents, well, specifically my dad, uh, tried to use me to kind of vicariously experience things. Um, he just, he always craved attention, and um, since I was a pretty good singer, he would try and make me uh, sing the national anthem before sporting events at the school, and it just never worked out too well. Um, okay, so... Here is our Wombo Lantern. Okay, so... I don't know, I think it turned out pretty cute. Let's see what time is it? it is. Okay. Yeah, see, those pages are tearing. I hate when it does that. Okay. Let's check our next prompt, and then I'll decide if I have time to do that one, or if we'll go ahead and call the stream, uh, since it has been a touch over an hour. I think I've got time for this one. It's going to be a dodo mummy. So, okay, this is... Maybe, let's see. Draw with zoo creation. And it is for October eighth through tenth. Hold on a second. Backing up and making certain that I did these all the same. Sixth, seventh, fourth, and fifth. First through third. Okay, yes. I'm weird and have to have them all the same, or I have to go back and like rip out a page and undo whichever one was different. 
it's just a thing. All right, so this one is Dodo Mummy. Which when one thinks about it is basically every hey, Dodo that we have anymore because they're all uh, taxidermied and therefore pretty dang close to uh, mummified. Or as close as we can get. I think this is going to be our last one because my back is killing me from sitting like this. Um, I'm not good at sitting for periods of time, especially bent over to draw. Okay, once again we're turning it sideways because I want more room to work. Dodos have kind of a flumpy, chubby, roundish body. We're going to again be drawing it from front view. They have these kind of, let me, let me double check. I want to say they have almost duck feet. No, no, not duck feet, more like chicken feet. That's doable though. Okay. Three toes? Yeah, three toes and then a spur in the back, but we're not too worried about the spur because, I mean, we're just drawing it from the front. Surprisingly uh, frightening looking feet for dumpy, dopey little bird. I mean, little is. little isn't the right word, but you know. They were not little birds by any stretch of the imagination, honestly. Um, part of why humanity so eagerly murdered them is because they were plump and made quite an enticing meal for a crew of hungry sailors who had not had fresh meat in some time. Okay. And they were not smart birds um, because they didn't have predators. Not, not predators like humans, at least. We are, were, something well outside of their knowledge. And that's why we murdered the hell out of them. I mean, let's face it, humans will cheerfully murder many things, but something that stands still while we do it, well, that's just, that's just a treat for us. very long bill relative to their size. Um, went back quite a ways into the head shape. And then there. It's almost a... It's like a thicker seagull bill, almost. And then they had eyes that were fairly small, comparatively. Their nostrils were pretty big, 
probably because they were, you know, flyers. Um, okay, so we've got our dodo bird. And now we're going to add some They actually had a, it didn't curve in like this as much as I thought it did. It was actually almost a, it's up, but then it goes back down. There we go. That's pretty close. The eye was actually, <clears throat> it's weird to see a bird where the, oh, hold on. Sorry, I'm looking at preserved specimens, and some of them, this curves up and some it curves down. We're going to go with the one that curves down. And that's really how it is. It goes up and then down. It's weird. Um, and then this top bell actually didn't go in. Well, it, it does, but it does this weird, like, there. Okay. And then the eye was set more like that and had a very large pupil. You can see why sailors just thought they were such dumb-looking animals. I mean, face it, they're, they are. It looks like the neck actually curves in a bit here, too. Okay, so now we're going to add our mummy wrapping. We're going to have some of it go the other direction. choice but to uh, <laughs> sorry shouldn't be so quiet while I'm streaming but it's just kind of a ridiculous animal that I'm trying to draw here Just doesn't really uh, make it any less so. <laughs> okay, so. Poor thing looks like what my uh, my family growing up would have described as ten miles of bad road. Wing. And we'll 
want back. But then I'm going to take a couple of these and extend them down. See how my hand is smearing the I just feel like this bird would, would look at you and go wark and completely mean every moment of that confused noise because it would have no clue what's going on or why it is being dressed in wrapped up bandages. It, it would just be very confused by the whole thing. It doesn't know why we're wrapping it in bandages. It doesn't really know anything. It, it, it exists. And it exists because it exists and it doesn't know why it exists, it just kind of does. And so we end up with this dumpy, confused bird who's being wrapped up like a mummy. And it is not entirely certain it enjoys this. But it's just kind of here. It's vibing, as my kids put it. But somebody vibe checked this bird far too hard. And it resulted in the most hilariously poor bird. <laughs> And there we have it, our dodo mummy. <laughs> um, well, I'm going to go ahead and end the stream here. Uh, let's swap back to chatting. As I said, I'm going to go ahead and end the stream. I'm going to keep checking on the air dry clay. Um, my goal, it's the very last stream of the month um, for the crafting streams. I will uh, show off everything that has been made during the streams so far this month. Um, and, you know, hopefully everything that has been finished, I'll show off and we will have the completed pumpkin that I crocheted, the completed bone fairy, which I have shown off already on Twitter and a few other places because, well, I was very proud when I finished it last night, uh, but it'll be shown off on the stream at the very end. Um, we will show off the air dry clay items. Uh, those will probably also have like pictures on Facebook beforehand, possibly Twitter, uh, just to show off. And of course, I will post all of the things that I've drawn so far tonight on my Twitter. Um, it is Mason Lloyd Six, I believe. Let me double check before I say that wrong, but I am pretty sure that it is. Yes, it is Mason Lloyd Six. If you do want to hit my Twitter, um, everything will be uploaded afterwards to Facebook as well, or not Facebook, but to uh, YouTube. All of the videos get uploaded there, so you can always check them out later. Uh, I think that my YouTube channel has got a wish creations. Let me double check that. I love how I say these things, and then I forget that I need to make certain I'm giving you the right information, so you know. Um, I am debating putting the uh, 
the Bone Fairy up for sale, but I'm not sure I want to because, well, it's really cool and I kind of want to keep it for myself. Um, if I can think of a way to make them easier to make, uh, then I will probably do that. Looks like my uh, YouTube channel is Mason L, but I think you can find it by looking for Cuddle Wish Creations. Um, that said, I do want to thank everyone who came out tonight for the stream. I hope that you enjoyed getting to see me work with uh, air dry clay and also my quick, simple drawings. And I hope that everyone has a great week. Take care of yourself, take care of others, and be safe.